What's up, everybody? Welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups, and welcome to PCP Movie Night. It's the show where every week we pick a movie, we watch it, then we gather here together with you live to chat about it. And tonight we're talking about 1957's Throne of Blood, kind of an inspiration from Macbeth by Akira Kurosawa, who we absolutely love. Last uh, November, I believe, we talked about Seven Samurai. Really great film. We really love and appreciate his films. And we are in the midst of Crew's Choice. So the only reason why we're doing Throne of Blood is because it was one of the crew's picks. And that member of the crew was the one and the only, the Brianiac. What is up, Brian? Welcome to the show. Thank you for picking such a ballin' movie. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I I had Macbeth on the brain. I think it was still just because of the, you know, the whole Crimson Cage thing. Yeah. You know, when I uh, got the chance to talk to uh, John and Alex for that one. Yeah. Um, and Alex's kid. You know, yeah, Alex's kid. Had to go potty. Um, yeah. And uh, didn't know anything about Macbeth, though. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, uh, but you know, so I went and watched one, uh, the 2015 movie then. And, and then, uh, I don't know, I know I gave you a couple different options, but, uh, yeah, we, we had trouble communicating this one, but I think, I think we landed on a good one. I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked. Did, did we have trouble communicating? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Cause we're doing a Kurosawa film and that's always best for me. Speaking of best for me, one of my bestest friends is Jelani. What is up, my man? Hey, hey station. Good to see you guys. Hey. Um, yeah, good, good movie pick. That's all I can say about that, man. Yeah. Kurosawa is always a favorite. Yeah, and you know yeah. we can't do a Kurosawa film or a samurai film at all without the one and the only, the bodacious one, Brooks himself. What is up? Pop, pop, boom, Brooks. What's up? Very enthusiastic every time you come in. All right, so let's get into it. 1957, Throne of Blood. So this is after Seven Samurai, yet before Yojimbo, right? And... I like this film. I like this film a lot. I love Kurosawa films, and he is one of the most influential filmmakers in cinematic history, right? And this was one that I always liked, but I always kind of felt like there was some there, there, there was something missing, right? And there's something that almost comes across on the rewatch that maybe it's too pared down, right? Maybe maybe it's like too concise, maybe it's too streamlined. But honestly, I don't think that's the case because this, out of all of his films, is one of the most haunting films. This is downright almost a horror film, bruh. It is scary. Not just scary with its themes of ambition and 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 like, you know, like uh I like free will versus destiny. All that shit aside, it's just fucking creepy because of the way it's foggy, the way the the the, the music when it's there is very like it's so ethereal, but at the same time, very eerie, right? It's eerily fucking creepy. This movie really sets a tone. And uh, what's his name? Uh, Mifuni. What's his name? It's uh, Toshiro Mifuni. Or, yeah, 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 Mifuni. Yeah, absolutely freaking amazing in this role. Solid performances. Amazing camera work. The cinematography. The use of the black and white, the use of the camera movement, the use of how that ties into the character's motivations, to the theme, telling the story visually. It is quite exceptionally a masterpiece, right? Speaking of picking masterpieces, Brian, you picked one. So why don't you tell us why you like this movie so much that you picked it? Well, uh, yeah, so I discovered Kurosawa like in the early 90s. I don't know. One of my friends showed me, I think it was Ron was the first one. And then that started kind of that journey because, you know, he has a lot of movies and a lot of really good ones. So it was a wonderful journey. Um, and, and I think this one is one of the highlights, you know, of, of his work. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, obviously it's got Mifune in it, you know, and, uh, uh, and I like how you mentioned the fog. Cause that was something I noticed this time around. Like it's like everywhere, you know, I mean, it's so cool, you know, uh, it and, gives uh, it like ghostly quality to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually had some time this weekend, uh, so I actually watched uh, three Macbeth movies this weekend to prepare this one. I watched this one to be the last one. Um, they were all under two hours. I think that's just a thing about Macbeth. It's got to be around an hour and 45 minutes or, you know, that's it. But I watched Scotland PA from Joe Corallo's recommendation, which, by the way, really good. And then uh, that newer one, The uh, Tragedy of Macbeth with Denzel Washington. Man, that was good. That was good. But 
but like and watching that one right before i was able to compare the play because that one actually is the play like the i mean they actually use the dialogue you know shakespeare's dialogue and everything like that and that so that way I, you know i kind of had a lot of that fixed in my mind but really you can enjoy the this movie on its own even without really knowing big beth i'm pretty sure i mean it, it's that cool i would agree with that 100 percent, brian so but uh but yeah i had big beth on the brain and that's why i picked it and uh yeah all right yeah, it's it's considered by a lot of people maybe one of the best cinematic representations of Macbeth of all time. Some and people it, think it is. A, there, you know, there's a lot of differences, right? They they leave some yeah. things out. There's different relationships, different dynamics, certain things that are downplayed, certain things that are upplayed. Um, yeah. But it does capture the spirit of what that story means and resonates through humanity. You know, speaking of resonating through humans. Uh, Jelani does that when he goes super vibrational, when he's crossing multi-dimensional barriers. What do you think about Throne of Blood? What's your thoughts overall, Jelani? Yeah, I, I really liked it. It's um, this is the first time I've watched it. Uh, I've only watched the um, Macbeth. Isn't this the one called the, like the Scottish play or something like that? You, they don't call it Macbeth. Or is well, this, if you're, if you're performing in it, you can't say can't say the name of the play. It's bad luck or something. Okay, okay. I think that was Hamlet though. But uh, with Macbeth, I remember Macbeth are watching it like in like seventh or eighth grade, in, uh, in at the Birmingham Theater, and uh, I mean it was amazing. I didn't know half of what was going on, but I did understand that Lady Macbeth is a crazy lady. Um, so it's it's just. So, and this is no different. Um, it is it is scary. It's ominous. The the witch, the fog, all of the all of the past warriors warning him of what to, what's to come. That is some crazy junk, man. And it's 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 beautifully shot. Like this is one of I mean, uh, of course it's a Criterion Collection. I watched it on Max, formerly HBO Max. But um, it, it it's such a beautiful film, like they I don't know if they had to restore it or whatever it is, but to share Mofuni, like his expressions, like on the screen, oh, it's awesome. He 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 plays that world like I think it's Washu, very well. Like the the character developments, the everything that happens to him, like he's told it, and yet he's he goes by that prophecy even though it you know it kind of feels that way all because he's being goaded by his wife and it's it, it's the same story it, it's i guess it's a tale as old as time so it, it's it's pretty good i really like, like it. the music is music's awesome um it's got a great theme of ambition it, it does I'm, I'm telling all my stuff early but it's just that good yeah it's, it's just told so well and it uh, it, it, it doesn't it lags in parts but it lags for a reason so i like that about these movies especially seven samurai does the same thing so he he knows how to get you engrossed in the world that you're trying to be in especially when it's a fog world yeah so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fog world the fog of Akira kurosawa um all right brooks what do you think about this film i know you're a big fan of kurosawa so what do you think about oh, that Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm always I'm always excited to watch a new Kurosawa film I haven't seen yet, and uh, this one is, is, is really good. Um, I remember I, I've not I remember we, I did Macbeth in high school like way back, so I kind of like I remember a lot. I don't remember a whole it very well, but you know I did see a lot of the parallels between this this uh, interpretation of it and the original, and uh, like. To me, I, when I thought, I always thought about the political intrigue aspect of it, which is still in this one. But like, I think Kurosawa kind of goes from almost like a psychological horror in it, in, in a way, with this, like especially in the way a lot of it's shot. Like that scene where late where uh, his wife walks into that doorway and just disappears into the darkness, mm -hmm. and then comes back out. I was like, I don't know, man. I think he was trying to kind of get a little bit of a horror vibe going on this one. Oh, I think for sure, man, 100%. And I, I like that you mentioned like the psychological aspect of it because you, the character of, of Macbeth, the what fuck it, what, what's it? Washizu. Washizu, yeah. Right. Um, like they get into it and it's it's so much of it's done visually 
just through the performances and all that kind of shit, right? So that, that leads me to the next bit. This movie is anchored, of course, like all great films, with great performances. Brian, this is your pick. You get to go first. What's a performance you want to highlight out of this film? Well, obviously, I mean, the go-to choice for this one would be Washizu because it's Mufune, and the, this is a title role, very familiar thing and everything like that, but I kind of want to hear some other folks' thoughts on, on that. So uh, I'll go with The Witch. I thought the witch in this one was fantastic. Uh, and we, you know, we only got one, right? It wasn't the three or anything like that, but you know, that first part with the loom that had me creeped out the whole time. And then like in the forest, man, I, I just, that's, that was one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie. <laughs> that part where, I mean, when they go back out, when he goes back out and then it changes to the different warriors, like you were mentioning Delaney. I mean, that, that part was, I, I don't know. I just thought that was fantastic. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I was creeped out the whole time. I was yeah. creeped out by the loom, and the and it wasn't like the loom was threatening, but you know, it's just like <laughs> her repetitiveness and singing. Yeah, and, and doing uh, it is so yeah, it is so like absent-minded saying the, and, all these and, and the shit she's saying, right? Yeah. You know, like it's like dark, it's like filled with despair and just negative energy yeah. and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, something like that. Human leave. lives are so brief. Yeah. And, yeah. and then uh, you're the all way, dying. <laughs> And then the, the effects they did on the voice, I thought were like really cool. And I bet in the fifties, that sounded amazing. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, it sounds good in, in 2023. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of sounding good in 2023, what about you, Jelani? What's the performance you want to highlight in Throne of Blood? Yeah, uh, Brian, I was going to pick The Witch too, but uh, I, I'll, I'll go, <laughs> nah, don't worry about it, dog. Uh, I mean, that, that's, the, that's the single scariest thing I've seen in a long time. Like just, <laughs> Just like something in the middle of the woods losing its mind and, and telling you your future. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh no, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And and then things start to happen and you're like, wait a minute, I believe you. And then you tell your men and then you're horribly killed. So I mean it's it's a crazy character. And I thought it was a guy, an old man at first. And I remember like I think there were the there the three witches in Macbeth are like the Stegian witches. I can't remember. Yeah, they're similar to that. Yeah. So they, they share that trinity, but uh, this one witch was enough. That was enough to freak me out. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, since you picked the witch, I'm going to go with the second one, and that's going to be like uh, Wishizu's wife, yeah. uh, technically Lady Macbeth. Uh, she makes no eye contact with her husband. She's very monotone. I don't see why he, what he saw in her, unless it was an arranged marriage. But I think she was... a. a I think she was a crazy person the entire time, and he just listens to her. Like he, she's like, "You can, you can just kill these people in your house. It's okay. I'll just drug the wine and and do it, and then this will just be a thing." And he's like, "What? <laughs> and just does it. Like I'm not gonna li if I if I if I'm being like pushed into murdering my boss, like because he's at my house." I'm gonna be like, lady, you crazy. Something wrong with you. I turn her in. I just really would. It's, it's too, too much work. Well, but, yeah, this, this, the, the, the sword of the prophecy was always hanging over his head. Right. And the fact that his friend knew about it and that it had come true and that, you know, so he, it was that fear she used right. to convince him that, you know, what if your friend tells him about this prophecy? Then the Lord's gonna try and kill you to prevent you. the prophecy. Right. And it's such a crazy, like, way to go. But I mean, it's right in certain in certain things. But Mickey's still his friend, and it, they they've been through a lot together. They've done a lot of things together, and they they pretty much trust each other. For that prophecy to shatter their trust is just absolutely insane. I'd be like, not a witch. No, I wouldn't listen to anything you say anyway. Never mind. Trees coming out the woods. You crazy? No, it's, it's just stuff like that. Um, but she she. That character, I'll keep calling her Lady Macbeth. Lady Macbeth, she is absolutely insane. Um, I wouldn't trust her like past anything. If they got, got married, we would be in different rooms. By the way, it's Asaji. Is Asaji? Asaji. But she, the way she is when she's washing her hands. Yeah, dude. She all all that coldness off. leading to that moment of breakdown. Right. Yeah. Yep. Very. So she funny. did that herself. She yeah. did that to herself. And, and in the typical Macbeth story, regardless of what you think of Lady Macbeth, her and her husband, th there is a connection there, and there's more of a distant coldness 
in, in this one. I don't know if it's meant to just kind of represent a cultural thing or whatnot, or whatnot but it, it like adds more of a she of does not look unnerving and unsettling mm-hmm. quality yeah. to it. Not just that 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 she's evil and manipulative and ambitious and 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 willing to convince her husband to commit murder to elevate their station, but that there's it almost seems like with her because of the way it is that it's it's almost like a more unsettling approach to that character. I think. It's like very practical. Like, yeah. For her, it's like you know you have this opportunity, you need to take it. Mm-hmm. And like you know, to her, it's like you know we. It's about wiping the threats away, you know, like keeping herself and her husband safe. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, well, when you said her being evil there, I, I was thinking that too, because I, I think a difference between this and the play was, I don't remember in the play that, uh, you know, that Macbeth was going to anoint Banquo's son kind of, you know, in a way of fulfilling the prophecy because they didn't have children, you know, and she was like, you know, she's like, nah, I'm pregnant. You know, but I guess she actually was pregnant. But I mean, like that, like popped in my head. Like, you know, she immediately went, "No, you just need to get rid of them." You know, but because that's like a reasonable thing, right? <laughs> we just go ahead and name them, and then it's like meets the prophecy, no blood. Yeah, you know, sure. and, and and it was like after that that I think that that's when you know he just went off the deep end, right? Oh yeah, you know, when, sure. pretty much. He lost it the rest of the way. Yeah, he seemed like a normal guy. He seemed like he was gonna be fine. He, this dude was slowly losing it from the very yeah. beginning of this movie. Let's be honest, Ron. Let's, well, you know. yeah, because I, I, sure. I noticed this time, too, that, uh, you know, when they were uh, coming back from the prophecy, you know how confused they were getting back? Like, it was yeah. like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it just started getting unsettling right away. Because it you was, know, I, yeah, they were through that wood. And, the, the and they just kept changing direction, you know, yeah. and stopping and going, huh? <laughs> you know, I don't know. That was I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. What about you, Brooks? What's the performance you want to highlight in the film? Oh, poor dumb Mickey. Like, he was such a good guy, but, you know, he was, t- I think, like, in, in this movie, he seems to be, like, the path that that um, the main character would have taken if you were, like, you know, if you were good, you know, if, you're, if he, he maintained his honor. Mickey is, like, he... It's, like, he, he, he's... He wants to stay honorable, but he does know he knows that the prophecy is true as well. So, like, you know, when the when the prince comes back and he's like, open the gates, he has to make that decision. Like, do I go along with the prophecy or do I like, you know, and, you know, I believe he is. He does truly believe that uh, his friend won't betray him. But, you know, um, he's he's wrong about that. (laughs) Like, I think it's his inability to see, you know how far his friend has fallen is what uh, leads to his, to his end. Yeah. It's a great performance. Unfortunately, I just, uh, like I, his, his, their chemistry early on, like, you know, when they're like, you know, just talking to each other. Yeah. Like, I just wish they feel like good friends. I wish they would have developed that a little bit more further. Like mm-hmm. maybe we could have seen a little bit more from Miki's like perspective. Right. And like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. There, that's the one thing. If I had a nitpick anything about this movie, that's the one thing I would, I would get at now. Okay. Y'all have left me fucking Mifuni, right. As uh Washitsu, right. Um, fucking brilliant in this role, right. Facial, like the, the, the emoting from the face, um, the body language, um, everything about it, like being able to give a very strong performance with very little, a very understated performance. And if you look at Macbeth and compare the amount of words it takes to tell that story, Kira Kurosawa's and, and Mifune, they're doing that with, with gesture, with word, with camera movement, stuff like that, right? And you got to give this dude major props because even though I like the character that he plays in Seven Samurai better because that's just such a great character, this motherfucker had real archers shooting real arrows at him at the yeah. end of this fucking movie, bro. Like, I kept going, how the fuck did they do this? And so I looked into it. Yeah, dude. They straight up just had dudes shooting fucking arrows at him. Like they just had to go away from him. Which way he yeah. was gonna go, and that's why he's moving his arms this way. But I don't know if that's all acting, but that that panic in his face in that moment, man, I feel it, and that felt very fucking real. And then we're about to get into the style and structure right now. And one of the things I want to say is not only how expertly paced and shot this movie is and lit this movie is, but that fucking arrow through the throat. Dude, in 1957, that was that must have been a jaw fucking dropper because it still holds up today. That whole ending sequence 
The movie has a sense of dread, atmospheric foreboding that carries all the way through. And even though I do think that there is some problems structurally with the story, maybe it's a bit too streamlined. Maybe we need a little bit more of some of the other lords because you don't actually feel the outside threat coming in. But on the other hand, that's what makes this a more psychological approach to the story, where we're inside the paranoia, right? He has been assured of this prophecy. It's all come true, but he's had to bloody his hands in order to fulfill this prophecy. Now he feels that he can own this prophecy, and it just becomes a, a descent into madness, and I think that that's something I really appreciate it. So I could nitpick it and be like, we need to see more of these outside forces, like the leader of Seven Samurai, like he's in this movie he should be a more important role, but he's not really. And same thing with Mickey, right? Like they, they, they feel like they should be more involved, but at the same time, I don't know if it's necessarily a character study, but it is following this character's descent into paranoic madness. Um, so I think that's great style wise though. Fucking shit, y'all. This is amazing. The action sequences, the tight cutting of those, the elongated scenes, the, the way that the camera is still when, um, uh, um, uh, fuck, what's his name again? Uh, Washizu. 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 When, when he's still and, and like, like insecure or like bottled up, the camera's static. And when he's excited, the camera starts moving. And it's just such a fucking well made film, technically, that I think it soars. What about you, Brian? What do you think about the style and structure of Throne of Blood? Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, you, you nailed it. But yeah, the, the that's a, you know, that <clears throat> shaky camera thing, that's not a, that's not a very common. Kurosawa thing that I remember uh, that, that, you know, I'm not saying I've studied every film I've watched, but he normally, you know, has the controlled, you know, pans and, you know, all that, all that good stuff. So that frenetic part. And, and I like that when it's used at the right time, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's insanely effective, you know, that, you know, the handheld kind of technique or whatever. And uh, yeah, I love that. Um, and, you know, you were mentioning uh, some of the outside world. That was one thing I did notice that was kind of a difference is that McDuff wasn't really in it. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. I think that was supposed to be Inui, the, you know, the outside threat. The outside and, threat. You, you know, it's kind of in there, but like, you know, the in the play, like, you know, he goes after his family, you know, and, and like they actually interact. And then, and that, and that's really the climax, which that's kind of, that's probably the biggest difference is uh, the end, right? You know, I mean, and, but I'm perfectly okay with that difference because that scene with the arrows is awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's so yeah. cool. Yeah, and, it's, it and it, and it, you know, I mean, Japan and Japanese culture is very wide and varied and everything like that. But that's like, that's what I think of when I think of samurai action, you know, and, and, yeah. and like with those, you know, I know a lot of it's the swords and everything like that, but they definitely used arrows, you know, and, and the, and the outfits, man, that armor that, that all those dudes had, that was just like, mm -hmm. so cool. So that's cool. Fun. But, but yeah, I, I do love this one. It, it's like, you know, yeah, I don't get bored you know, right. at any point and everything like that. And, uh, um, yeah. And, and since I had the story fresh in my mind, it was, that was kind of interesting, you know, to kind of bounce some of the stuff on and off because yeah, it's pretty sparse on dialogue. You know, I mean, the, mm -hmm. you know, it is based on a Shakespeare play. So, uh, but yeah, and it's, it's so cool how effective it is, you know, without a lot of that dialogue. I know that some of that dialogue can be off putting for people and, you know, kind of draggy and stuff like that. I, I get that, but, uh, but uh, but I I thought it was you know, Kurosawa just made great choices every every step. Absolutely. You know, you know. And uh, Miko is right. The thumbnail is uh, an image that is not from Throne of Blood. Uh, months ago, when I was putting together the thumbnails for the Cruise Choice, I uh, did a Google search of Throne of Blood, saw this one, thought it looked cool. And then uh, this morning, when I was uh, posting and getting everything ready, I realized, fuck, dude, that's not from Throne of Blood at all. <laughs> I haven't recently watched it, so. Uh, you know, I still think it's a good thumbnail, but uh, maybe we'll leave it there or maybe we'll fix it. Or what's up, Zach? How you doing? And thank you for everybody that's watching live in the chat as we discuss Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, despite what the thumbnail will have you believe. Jelani, what do you think about the style and structure of this film? Uh, it's great, actually. It's one of those films that really has a great pace to it. Um, the costume design is absolutely fantastic. You're right, Brian. It's it's. Uh, all the armor, all the, the 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 set pieces around around what this time period was, the flags in the back, that junk yeah. is so awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was like, wow, 
These are actually they they look, they look like warriors, like Japanese warriors. And they got it. They, he nailed it so well in this movie. Um, I, I like the scared horse portion where they're running through and the, the horses are like spooked out over what's coming next. And they're like, the rats are leaving. I love these little hints that like, the A, the forest is possessed. B, P, there's a <laughs> lot of smoke. And I think the fog is just from like Macduff or, or Inui's men like cutting these trees down and camping out and planning and like this just so happens the smoke is on its way too with this fog it's just it's so ominous when they come through with the trees and the trees are moving as the witch like like proclaims it uh, those those little set pieces all that stuff oh my gosh the fact that they got all this and they shot it so brilliantly that's one of my favorite shots next to the, all the stuff with the witch um of the trees mm -hmm. moving through yeah. that fog it is such a progressive shot and like it, it it's so amazing like it blows my mind that i was like wow and i'm watching on my great big tv and criterion and it's just it blows me away that it, it's as haunting as it it's supposed to look because it freaks him out he looks in the mirror and he looks out the window and sees them and then jumps back and has to look again to make sure because you know it's 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 his end and he he was it was his prophecy that he was told that this would happen and he didn't believe it and i'm like everything else has come true dog <laughs> pretty much except for yeah. nikki's son taking over which is coming really soon and the arrows are freaking brilliant too yeah you're right it's it's the fact that they had archers like shooting arrows at him i'm like you're not paying me enough. Once again, <laughs> I'm whatever you're paying me. That's not enough. Cause like you, I mean, I'm sure they're talented, but like one can like get away from you. And that's, like win some, win. that's like some Tom Cruise shit, man, where he's like, actually shoot the arrow yeah, yeah. through my fucking throat. Yeah, I want, yeah, I want, I want to. Right. We'll, we'll do it. We'll be ready. Yeah. yeah, it's just so insane. And like he's walking, and and that death scene is so clean. It's just he, he's covered in arrows, and that arrow stops, bro. And it's yeah. just you hear the wind and the footsteps. Oh my goodness, so good! It's it's yeah. such a brilliant film. I mean, Kurosawa, he was a genius, an absolute genius. Yeah, but you yeah. were talking about the trees moving. I one thing I thought was impressive with that was how cool it looked, and it was only four three. Mm -hmm. You know oh, what wow. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like normally you would do that wide, mm -hmm. and it, yeah. you know, and but I thought it it didn't look compressed, like yeah. that was you know to me like it still looked like just terrifying forest moving. <laughs> yeah, I think a part of that's, that's the first always use of the telephoto lens, which kind of makes things certain mm. like feel almost flat, but it also kind of widens out a little bit. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. What about you, Brooks, man? What do you think about the style and structure of this film? Uh, that's good. It's pretty much like what I'd expect from Kurosawa at this point. It's uh, he's very good at capturing that like kind of ancient Japanese uh, feel. And, you know, this movie is no different. Now, he does take it a bit darker, you know, in this one, I think, than, than some of his other movies, which is, which, you know, works for the, uh, for the themes of the story. Yeah. You, know, you can feel, you can feel the paranoia. Yeah. And like, you know, the, uh, the anxiety of the main character throughout the movie. And a striking use of black and white, too. Very little gray, yeah. right? Like, there like, was one point where I, I, that made me kind of wish that the movie was in color and it was the blood stain. You know, from when they walk into the room where the, the dude had to kill himself, like that blood stain, like, you know, you can tell, you can see it, but you can't like, you know, it, it doesn't have that, like, if it was actually in color, you'd see the red, I think, better. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's still like, I think it still works. Yeah, it does. The music is by Masuro Sato, and I love the music. Like, there's not a lot. Like, it's not like a composition that's like super full or anything like that. But like, the bits that are there are there, and they work. Like the the Greek chorus to stuff, basically, right? The whoa, right? You get all that kind of stuff. It's very chilling, and then you've got this very melancholy, somber fucking score to this movie with the percussion, with this slow, almost dirge, like a funeral march kind of thing right that was just leading to the tragic end of this story and what is even more impressive 
than that is the moments where Kurosawa and company decide not to use music and to use mm -hmm. certain effects in the sound design, including the wind. It is fucking amazing how much the wind brings to the soundtrack, to the score, mm -hmm. to the sound design. What do you think about the music and stuff, Brian? Yeah, well, I'm glad you pointed that out because, yeah, that's uh, I did notice that there was less music, but it's not like I it, just because I, I didn't notice it in a bad way. <laughs> it didn't make me, you know, I didn't go, well, you know, this could have used music. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I love it. And I love that that classical. I, I think it's called No Dramas. I know H yeah. those yeah. that that's, uh, you know, that the music from those is is so cool. And, uh, you know, it, they used it so well in this one and uh and i you know I, I like that scene where the guy was doing the you know the dance to it and everything like that i uh you know and the you know and all that stuff i don't know it's, it was just really cool um and uh but yeah where it wasn't that that style though but uh what, what i mean when it wasn't that style it was it was just you know creepy you know kind of oppressive and you know i mean it really 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 built the atmosphere you know around the visuals and just you know, you know, really perfect marriage there. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I did go look up, see if I could find the soundtrack and pretty much all I could find was like the theme and, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. I was, I was kind of bummed by that. I would like yeah. to. It's, it's it, like, I could find like a, like a 12 minute kind of like suite put together and I could find like the main theme and stuff like that. But yeah, but it, it does work. And there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of composition, right? Mm -hmm. Like so, right. Some, some movies have very small composition and they just utilize it effectively. Speaking of utilizing things effectively, Jelani utilizes lots of things effectively, including his love gun. What do you think about the music <laughs> in Throne of Blood? Um, it's very minimalist. Like you guys say, it's, it's it's when it's there, it's needed to be where it is. And when it stops, like you said before, Robbie, those sounds where it, it just ends is is very scary and it tells more of a story too. Um I, and the witch's song, the witch's song will scare me. Like it just freaking haunts me, man. That's just one of those things that just like will forever creep me out because you're just sitting there spinning that wheel, and I think it's like an old man. I'm like, what is going on? What's going on? Then, it, the, 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 then she starts singing, and whatever that was, and I'm like, oh yeah, oh yeah, we leave now. So yeah, this is where we're doing it. So the music is very effective in this movie, and that's just one of those scenes that just still kind of bothers me. But it's it's great. Yeah, absolutely. Brooks, what about you, man? What do you, what do you think about the music in this film we're talking about called Throne of Blood, directed mm -hmm. by Akira Kurosawa? Well, the soundtrack is used very sparingly in this movie, but I mean, when it is there, it's it's good. Um, this movie is kind of. It's kind of like Once Upon a Time in the West that a lot of it uses background noise, you know? Like, sounds like, you know, there's a scene where uh, his wife is walking and you can hear the sound of her, like, oh. uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the robes swishing together. Yeah, yeah that was and, cool. But it, the, when it does have the soundtrack, the soundtrack is good. It's, 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 it is pretty much like what I expect in a Kurosawa movie as well. A lot of the, those deep bass drums, like, doom, doom, doom. And, you know, you got the, the, the pipes, of course. But uh, yeah, quite, it's still it's good. I'd like. I think it was better. You know, it, it was used more minimally in this movie because I think the, the the idea of having like a lot of the background noise like makes it more ominous in a lot of ways. It, it adds to the mood. Yeah. The last thing this movie needs is. Yeah. Yeah. It does have some like <laughs> some, some of those moments where it'll have like, like those loud noises to like accentuate a scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess they call it a stinger. Yeah, like dun 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 dun. dun. Wah. You know, like one of those kind of things, right? I love that bit. You know, when he gets killed, he gets shot in the in the neck with the arrow, and it's like dun 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 dun. dun. You hear the got him. That's all, folks. Anyway, wow. so for a, for a, for a Paris like... film that's based on a Shakespeare play, um, there's got to be a lot of thematic richness to the story. What about you, Brian? What's this movie speaking to you? What's it about? Uh, I'll just go with the easy one. It's ambition, you know, and the, the perils of ambition, you know, I mean, it, cause it, it was almost like uh, those, you know, Mishizu and Miki weren't even thinking along those lines. Like they, they, they would be, well, 
I guess Lords is what they were saying there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah they, content. yeah, they, you know, they just had a, you know, fought off the rebellion and were successful and, you know, really just want to get home, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And then they're presented with, Hey, well, you're going to be doing this and, you know, and all that. And, uh, and Mickey, it didn't seem to affect him that much, you know, but, you know, with Shizu, he, he was like, wow, you know, but, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he was already getting rewarded with the, you know, the one fort that the trader, you know, had, uh, come from, you know, and everything. And, and, uh, um, and, uh, you know, I guess, you know, in a way, like some of that ambition, you know, was just kind of, uh, you know, contagious in a way, you know, with his, you know, with his wife, you know, and, you know, he's trying to balance, like, you know, I, you know, I, I feel like that was kind of the, the tension was like, he was trying to, you know, balance honor, loyalty, you know, this code that the, you know, the samurai code that's pretty rigid, you know, and, you know, loyalty to your masters is like, you know, this high on the list. Right. I mean, it's the highest, you know, and he's trying to balance all these things and, and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work out, you know, I mean, I mean, it, you know, you know, uh, you know, power through ill gotten means, you know, I mean, that's kind of, uh, you know, the, you can kind of look at it as a ends do the ends justify the means kind of thing, you know, yeah. too. You know, sure. I mean it's uh but yeah, obviously that's the easy one with <laughs> I mean they say ambition so many times in the movie. Yeah, they do. I mean, and it's, you know? it's, it's right there. I mean, that's what the fucking thing's about, right? It's the danger of ambition and, and how far will you go? Right. And and yeah. like, do you trust in I'll get to I'll get I'll get to that now. Well, and it's like, is it worth it too, right? I mean, like it's not like he was happy. No, no, exactly. You know, achieving these goals, right? I mean, he was. It seemed like he was know. happier when he was loyal. Right. Yeah. Loyal to a he cause, was. to a to a per, to a mission. You know. Yeah. In a way, and he betrays who he is for his ambition, and that doesn't get you anywhere. And the thing is, I don't want to bury my lead or nothing, but the thing is, you can't force destiny. Do you know what I'm saying? With mm -hmm. with will. But we'll we'll get to that. What about you, Julani? What do you think this movie's speaking to you? not everyone is your friend um and it goes like a lot of ways a lot of different ways it's like mickey like you said uh, brooks mickey trusts um or was she's a little too much like and you, you can tell that from the very beginning uh, like as their camaraderie uh, grows. It's like mickey's jack kirby and was is uh stan lake <laughs> <Dang, laughs> <Dang. laughs> i wouldn't say true? all that but yeah okay um it's just, and then the the trust of his wife, you know, and, and how she manipulates him into doing what he needs to do. It is such. It, it, it's just that's that's someone he should trust more than anyone else. The, his, the closest person that he has in his life, and his clo the closest person in his life. Has like, Go ahead, kill your boss. You do it. <laughs> your Go house. do it. This would be <laughs> awesome. You, you better do it before your friend does it and kills you. You better do it. She's you know, like, you know what? While you're thinking about it, I'm gonna go poison the guards. I'm gonna go do that real quick, okay? <laughs> Let me go in this black hole and pull out some poison and come out and kill him. Is that cool? Or drug him? And then you just go kill him. Isn't that cool? He's just standing there like, what? <laughs> he won't do it. So it's it, 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 it's not everybody's friend. Make sure you make the right choices when you make friends and and bonds and things of that nature it, it's it's important to have good people around you because if you don't have good people around you then shit like this happens and it, you just have to be be wary of the company you keep that's all i can say about it speaking of which the company i keep is the best you guys rock i love you everybody love here on the panel everybody there watching love thank you, you so much for being love here we really do appreciate it so uh, brooks what do you think the themes of this movie we're talking about throne of blood directed by akira kurosawa well, I, I think a big theme in this movie is kind of the fragility of authority, really. You know, especially back in the ancient days, you know, like authority figures were seen as, you know, revered. You know, there's the whole divine right of kings thing. But really, like, the wife breaks it down. It's like when he's like, I can't kill my lord. Like, but she's like, like, uh, you know, this is his castle. But she's like, well, he had he didn't he kill somebody to get this castle. But, you know, and this, but by that same token, like. When he has the authority, he realized that he's also, you know, is not as invincible as, you know, he, he may think. Like, it's this idea that, you know, 
authority is like a way to to keep you safe, you know, to keep your family safe. But really, it, it usually ends up just putting you in more danger because, you know, everybody's looking to take a shot at the guy on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of, and it's another thing, Rooks, too. Uh, like, when you have power, the best thing you can do with power is to help your people. Because if you help your, if you help the people around you, they'll lift you up. That I mean, if you get the love of the people, you will control the cities. I don't know where I heard that, but it's true. You you've got to get the will of the people behind you before you're able to make moves. He was killing close people to him. He was it's making like the them fear, feel the, the paranoia power. inspired by his authority and his knowledge of how easily he could lose it is what causes yeah. him to like yeah. you know, do all these things. It's like fucking Robert De Niro and fucking Goodfellas. Yeah. Right. You know, where he just starts fucking killing like they they, they have the biggest, the biggest fucking heist in mob history. And he's like so paranoid about it. he kills fucking everybody. Right. Yeah. Go around that corner. Yeah. Just just go over there. Yeah. Go over there. Go over there. Yeah, yeah. Just go over there. Anyway, um, you guys all hit the nail on the head. Ambition. Uh, watch about the people who are around you. Uh, the, 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 the fragility of authority. What I like to pick out of this is this. The danger of using destiny and free will mixed together. So we, 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 we got this like predestination and free will kind of conversation that goes around sometimes in certain things. Are we, con- are we controlled by the fates or do we have a choice? Me personally, I think that it's both. And it's one of those stories. It's kind of like the Oedipus story, right? Where it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Where like you get mm-hmm. the idea. And so like, we don't, we don't mad. We don't come across fucking forest spirits too often. Some of us may have, right? But not not too I'll often. Go to the woods. We I'll don't come the across woods. the fates or the three witches or whatever telling us shit, you know. Like, but we can get. Let's say, let's say the uh, the forest spirit and let's say the witches and and Macbeth. They represent the just the the idea of us inside of ourselves saying you're going to be this one day. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's a destiny. Now I'm imposing my will on it. I'm forcing something. If something is meant to be, something is going to be, it's going to be, right? If something is meant to be, it's going to be. We can't force it. Whenever we have something, let's say it's a, like say personal relationships, let's say romantic love, uh, let's say like family relationships, let's say work relationships, let's say anything in your life, your profession, your career, which is exactly fucking the same thing. I don't know why I equated that into two different things, but let's just say you got, the gift, you got the power, you're on the road of destiny. You're 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 going there. Your ultimate point is where you want to be. But then you're impatient with how to get there. Or people around you are impatient. Maybe you're listening to the people around you. Maybe it's the wrong people around you. And your ambition is there and you're on that fucking path. But now you're going to start forcing shit. And I've learned this very recently. You cannot force shit. Things that are meant to be will be. And the more you force something, let's say you have an animal you're trying to tame. Do you tame that animal through force, Brooks? Horses? Can you do that? Can you tame horses through force? No. Well, I mean, you, you kind of do. Yeah, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Blew up that point. <laughs> yeah, blew up that point. All right, well, anyway, Sometimes if you, you ask the dog whisperer how much force is utilized to, like, to, like, deal with a dog, Right. Like training has nothing to do with force. Training has to do with like intelligence and anticipation and cause and effect and shit like that. Right. And diligently working towards something in a calm, non-forceful way. Like, I'll tell you this, y'all. Okay. How about this analogy, uh, Brooks? Can you tame a Robbie through force? (laughs) Well, no, you you certainly can't do that. (laughs) (laughs) You ain't no horse, man. Yep. I'll go. Destiny can be a very powerful thing and to have a very powerful ambition and desire and destiny and feel like you're destined to be there is great. But also watch how you heed the warnings, how you make sense of things. We all take things and apply significance to it in our lives. Sometimes you're like, bro, this song came on when I was thinking about that. That must mean something. That's cool. But don't get your perception on misreality too confused with reality, right? Because Mm -hmm. The crows are a bad omen. No, not in this case. Why the fuck not, dude? It, it, <laughs> they are a bad fucking omen, but you are refusing to believe it because in the play, the whole thing is no, like nobody, nothing born from a woman will harm you. 
right? Or something yeah. like that. And then that's this what, one is yeah. like the, the trees will move. And he's like, well, that's impossible, bro. It's not impossible. We've all seen Lord of the fucking Rings. So, you know, it's what <laughs> happened. Anyway, okay. destiny is a good, powerful thing. And it's a great source of inspiration. But do not force your destiny. Allow it to be. Be worthy of that destiny. Don't steal it from somebody else. Don't force it. Does that make sense? It does. Man. All right, time to rate the movie out of five, you digs. You out there in the chat that have seen it, let us know what you think about Throne of Blood. And Brian, why don't you kick us off? Uh, well, I, I had to give it a five. I mean, I, there's there's few Kurosawa movies I wouldn't give a five to. You know what I mean? I mean, they're just all so good. Um, and uh, But also, I, I, I really don't like that term, underrated. But I've noticed that in Kurosawa, when people talk about it, this one doesn't come up a lot it, 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 from my from my perception, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, usually it's seven samurai, Yojimbo, Rashomon, Rashomon. Yeah. Ikiru um, maybe even. Yeah. And I, that's one I haven't seen. I really need to see. Him. Oh Ikiru, dude. But... It's got the, uh, the main dude from seven samurai. Who's also in this movie's in that one. That's mm -hmm. a good one. I haven't seen that yeah. in years, man. Yeah. I do want to check that one out for sure. Um, but yeah, like, uh, and, and I really, really enjoyed it this time around too. Like, I mean, I like, you know what I mean? I just, no, no boring spots or, you know, I, I, I had it. It's probably the third or fourth time I've seen it and still just as good, you know? And, and uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm probably going to rewatch it again sometime soon. So, Hell yeah. Cause uh, it, I did read that it was delayed a little bit because Orson Welles did his Macbeth like yeah. right when he was about to start. And so he waited a while. So that would kind of go, which yeah, made me think I haven't seen. Orson originally Welles. he wasn't going to direct it. And then, because oh, of that delay, he wound up directing it. Yeah, and the Orson Welles Macbeth is awesome, bro. Yeah, I need to check that one out. Yeah, and he and stars as Macbeth, of... by the way, Orson Welles with that booming oh, voice. Okay, that booming voice. Man. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely have to check that one out. Yeah. All right, Delaney, what do you think? Uh, we got a perfect score from Brian. How do you follow that up? Mm. This is the first time I watched it. Um, I watched it. Uh, actually, one time and a half because I wanted to get some things, some points across, but. You know what? Yeah, I give it a five two. It's a masterpiece, so you got to give masterpieces sometimes five. Um, it, it's shot brilliantly. It's it's a gorgeous film. It scares the pants out of me. That which <laughs> that which bothers me, man. That which really bothers me because it's, it's it's prophecy, but it's self fulfilling prophecy, and it's 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 too on the nose. Like she tells it to him in such a way. To where you, she doesn't give you all the information. She just says, "This gonna happen to you, and this gonna happen to you." But she doesn't say how it's gonna happen to you and the motivations toward it. That like you hear warnings, but that's not the full warning. You know, sometimes you just gotta like, maybe maybe live a long life, no blood involved, like you said before. Um, if you just, you know, died an old man and gave and named the heir Mickey's son. And just it'd been fine, bloodless, no one got hurt. It, it's all what it is, but you know, like you said before, Robbie, you force it. So, it, yeah, it's a freaking masterpiece, and it's it's based off of Shakespeare, Shakespeare. but so yeah, five. Huh. All right, two perfect scores so far, Brooks. How do you follow that up? Oh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I'd probably give it a five to. Like, funny enough, uh, the first time I watched it, I didn't think I was going to give it a perfect score, but I watched it a second time, and I thought, like, I think, like, I appreciated the atmosphere, I think, a little bit more, like, mm -hmm. in, in the mm -hmm. second viewing. So, yeah, I'd give this one a five. It's definitely, like, like, I just, I'm, like, the, the the way it's shot, you know, like, it's, it's just a good, it's just, you know, it's, it's an Akira Kurosawa movie. So, like, you know. I mean, what do you want me to do, bro? It's a curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> a man almost died in it. Yay. He shot fucking real arrows at that dude. Man, dude. And it, it wasn't just a star. Like, arrows at me. It was a star. And it wasn't and just. He's like, hey, you, you guys can't hit me. Fuck you. And it wasn't just like, kunk, kunk. It's like. <laughs> like yeah. It's like five or six at a time every time, right? Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Um, I'm going to be right there with you. Five, you digs. Five. Um, and Brooks, I'm right there with you. I watched it twice this week. And the first time I watched it, I was like, it's good. But I would have liked if there was a little bit more of an outside threat looming in, show that it was building up over them. But I actually liked the fact that that was internal. 
in this movie. I love the atmosphere. I love the use of black and white. Like I always talk about Orson Welles' uh, Citizen Kane and other things that he did, like The mm -hmm. Stranger or even Touch of Evil and his use of black and white, uh, the use of black and white in, in Psycho, you know, for instance, Hitchcock's Psycho. They're, they couldn't do this today. There's something so fucking ethereal and creepy and eerie about it. Like, the whites are so fucking white. You know, like, Brian, I know you watch a lot of cartoonist kayfabe. You know how they have talked in times about mm -hmm. that John Romita Jr. Yep. Iron Man issue, about the importance of white, right? Yep. That is prevalent in this movie. You don't get this in movies today. And you didn't get in a lot of black and white movies back in those days. Like I said, very little gray. Everything's either black or white. And the compositionally, very purposefully focused to be that. Technically, this is a master level film. Atmospherically, it is a master level film. Performance wise, it is a master level film. Script wise, it is a master level fucking script because so much is told with little dialogue, all through action, camera movement, performances, emoting, fucking brilliant. Five out of five. So that's a five from me, Brian, Jelani, and Brooks for a PCP average of five you digs. Station, pop, pop, boom. That's a perfect movie, Brian, you picked there, man. Well done. Uh, yeah, thank you. Usually this is what happens, you know. It's usually like uh, Cruise Choice is always funny because usually it's like five you digs across the board or it'll be like five you digs across the board and then one person doesn't like the fucking movie like Brooks with High Fidelity or it's my movie that I pick where I'm the only one who fucking likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all right dustin's our review of akira kurosawa's throne of blood and next week join us for mike's pick he's been trying to get me to watch this movie for a long time and it's finally here x machina is going to be the film we're talking about next week but before that join dylan over at dylan's horror show saturday night as they talk about the robert rodriguez quentin tarantino classic from dusk Till dawn. Oh, wow. So that should be a really, really cool conversation. Brian, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for picking a banging ass movie. Any final thoughts? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. And uh, um, yeah, I, I do like these cruise toys because I try to, you know, pick some things that people might not have seen and stuff like that. You know, um, and it's always fun to get on and talk to y'all about movies. Um, and uh, I do want to leave it with, uh, I do recommend that Tragedy of Macbeth, by the way, that, that new one with Denzel it's Washington, right? yeah, yeah. Francis McDormand, and and the witch in that, pretty dang creepy too, man. Okay, uh, all right. The, the, awesome. You can catch awesome. Brian on uh, the monthly review show on Friday night this week. Yes. Talk about the yeah. best comics of May 2023. Okay, I wasn't sure we locked that in, so that is going to be Friday. It's Friday. Seven. Yeah, okay. we're not doing it Thursday because my my homie's birthday is Thursday, and I'm going to see what he's up to. So, <clears throat> I don't know yeah. who that homie could be but I hope he wants to go to Twin Peaks. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for being here, man. Final thought? Um, maybe we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed this movie. Brian, that was a great pick. Um, yeah, we, we got to do more cruise choice stuff like this because I, I really like the picks we're getting so far. And Ex Machina, it's been a while since I've seen it. I, I'm mixed about it, but we'll t I probably got to watch it again to be absolutely sure. Um, yeah, have fun. Of course, you know, Brooks and I do this show, Go Figure Reviews. Uh, we had a few videos come out, uh, last couple of days. We dropped one today. Um, that was the blob. Yeah, exactly. We had the blob figure <laughs> review. Nothing um, the blob. That's right. And, uh, we also have our Grizzlo review, which came out, uh, the day before. And thanks for, cleaning, thanks, my, with Robbie. thanks for cleaning my vintage uh, Grizzly. It looked great, actually. Yeah, thanks. That was a lot of time and effort. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> you're like, dirty. how do you clean fucking this fur? And Brooks is like, fucking vacuum it. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I use Scotch tape. I just used ah, Scotch nice. tape. Oh, nice. Yeah, is like, hey, man, can I borrow your vintage Grizzly? I was like, yeah, but you got to clean it. Yeah, it's clean. <laughs> it's sparkless. So yeah, we're we're probably not going to do anything this week. So I mean, uh, well, because you know reasons. And um, I was thinking about <laughs> yes, Billy. You you're can, always welcome, you're Billy. Always Start driving now. You'll be yeah, here in time. You can, you can definitely show up, man. Um, but yeah, but 
watch our watch our channel, man. We're at two hundred and seven or six subscribers now. So that's it. we're still moving up, moving on up. Y'all I definitely check out Go Figure Reviews because it's literally the only channel I've ever watched where there was a dude at one point goes, "Well, I decided I didn't need a second bathroom, so I built a spaceship." Yep, <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> and we're gonna have a lot more kind of similar to that. Hell yeah, we, that's how awesome. Top of spaceship. <laughs> Brooks, thank you for being here, man. Final thoughts? I'm just wondering, like, I got this blood on my hands that won't wash off. Like, is anybody, like, is there, like, a special soap or something? Lava. Yeah, you guys yeah, I didn't even kill anybody. I just yeah. I just slipped and fell into a, a pool of blood, well, and it just won't, I can't get rid of it for some reason. So I think weird. if you put water in the basin, it works. Ah. Yeah, that helps, too. That does there help. wasn't water in that basin, I don't Not think. Not at all. She was doing you know, that. You away. <laughs> she just rubbed your hands together. <laughs> I will just go off. Try fire. <laughs> try, try fire. Maybe that will work. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Um, thank you all so much for being here. Join Dylan and the company of the DHS crew over at Dylan's Horror Show Saturday night as they talk about From Dusk Till Dawn. We will not be doing Rock and Robbie Live on Sunday because I will be seeing Weezer, but we will be doing the monthly review on Friday night, 7 p.m. Central Time. And be back here for PCP Movie Night next week, Monday night, 8 p.m. Central Time. Mike's Pick. Ex Machina starring dreamy Oscar Isaac. So I'm very excited to check this one out on behalf of everybody here at PCP station pop, pop, boom. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I don't know. What's a fucking quote from this movie. Like, I don't know. I didn't think of a cool quote. Brooks was the best part when he was just like wanting to wash his hands, wash the blood off his hands. Maybe we should just <laughs> left it at that. You know what I'm saying? Aside from that, I'll just be like, <laughs> how ridiculous are these prophecies? Like, <laughs> what if it's true yet <laughs> yet that's that's yeah let's just leave it there